In this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate an alternative to the out-of-the-box Revit Stair railing families. For this demonstration, I am using this system family from the out-of-the-box sample files. In Revit, stairs and railing are notoriously difficult to handle, edit and place. For example, in a project, I have copied the railing family over and modelled it as a stair handrail. There are some obvious flaws. The balustrade pattern is inconsistent. In some areas the gaps are larger and in other areas the pattern overlaps. Furthermore, in some areas the pattern is not even created. But what if there was an alternative? In this example, the railing has been applied smoothly with a consistent pattern. Even as I reveal the hidden flaw, you can see the rail flows smoothly and there are no pattern breaks when the rail changes direction. As I click on the family, some numbers appear and this should give you a hint as to how this family was created. Let's dig deeper. From the ribbon, I can edit the family so that we can unpack how this was made. This is an adaptive family, meaning the modelled elements are hosted to these adaptive points. As these points flex, their hosted model elements move in association. These families are so efficient. Watch as I quickly edit the balustrade pattern. This ability to quickly edit the balustrade spacing is invaluable and would take much longer using the traditional stair railing system. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll show you that again just to emphasize this functionality. Using the number parameter, I can toggle the number of times the pattern is repeated along a segment. I can then reload and reapply that to an adaptive family that has already been placed. That's very cool. Now let's unpack how this was made. The family consists of pattern families hosted to an adaptive reference line or frame. As I delete the pattern families, the reference framework is revealed. This is the hosting reference line. A circular profile has been swept along its extents. I can dissolve this from the ribbon to expose the form panels which host the pattern families. This can also be dissolved until the complete family framework is revealed. Furthermore, I can dissolve this reference line chain link to expose the joints that enable the flexing, otherwise known as the points. But these are only the secondary points. The primary points are these down here with the numbers. To place the primary points, you need to set up a framework. First, go to plan level. This setout is based on the stair that will host the adaptive family, and the frame needs to be set out for each of the planes. Once the primary points have been placed in position, the next step is to use these to host the secondary points, which define the height of the railing. To do this, select the work plane tool from the ribbon and use this to activate the horizontal plane. Then from the draw tools, select point and place it on the activated plane. Repeat this for all points. If at any time you want to slow the video down, use the YouTube speed settings. Use the filter tool to find the secondary points. And then use a custom made parameter to define the rail height. Now create a reference line string intersecting through each of the secondary points. Remember to tick 3D snapping on the options bar. Flex the frame to ensure that it moves correctly and proceed.
The next step involves creating forms in the way of panels to host the pattern family. To do this, first add vertical reference lines to segment the adaptive family. To create a form, select the reference lines in a closed loop. Then from the ribbon, select Create Form and then Solid. This creates an extrusion, which needs to be redefined so that it has a thickness of zero. With the form created, a surface can now be applied. Select the form and then from the ribbon, select Divide Surface and deactivate the U-Grid so that only vertical lines remain. Redefine the number of grid lines and then apply the pattern from the Type Selector. Repeat this for each of the remaining segments. If at any time you want to slow the video down, use the YouTube speed settings. To add thickness to the bottom and top rails, use the reference line chain link as a path and then sweep a profile along this path using a hosted 2D sketch and then click the create form button to finalize the extrusion. And now for the fun part, placing the family. Find the adaptive family in the project browser and right click to create instance. Then carefully select endpoints or intersections in the project to define the location of each adaptive point. Be sure to take your time and click carefully. In this example, I have placed model lines as clicking guides. With the family placed, you can now edit the family to redefine the balustrade pattern as we did earlier in the video. That's the end of the tutorial. As always, I hope that you learned something new and found it interesting. If you did, please add a comment and subscribe for more free content. Until then, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.